Pablo Picasso once called it the greatest film ever made. Francois Truffaut was also a huge fan. The film we're talking about today is Norman McLaren's Oscar-winning short film, Neighbors, from 1952. Norman McLaren was born in Scotland but emigrated to Canada. He's one of Canada's most beloved filmmakers and made over 50 short films in his lifetime. McLaren's career began when, after attending the Glasgow School of Art, he began to make short infomercials for the UK General Post Office Film Unit. The GPO Film Unit was run by the legendary documentarian John Grierson, who took McLaren under his wing. In the early 1940s, John Grierson moved to Canada and founded the National Film Board, which continues to be a cornerstone of Canadian filmmaking. Shortly after establishing the NFB, he brought McLaren on board as part of his team. McLaren began his career at the National Film Board of Canada working on a number of highly creative war bond campaign films, including V for Victory and Hen Hop. During this time, McLaren established his own team of animators within the NFB, who became known as Studio A. Some of the techniques that McLaren and his collaborators played with included optical printing and drawing and scratching directly onto film stock. McLaren tended towards more abstract, modernist shapes and forms in his work, often synchronized to music, as in his 1949 classic, Be Gone, Dull Care. But Neighbors, made in 1952, is an exception. Here we find McLaren experimenting with live action. The film depicts two men who appear to be friendly neighbors sitting side by side on loungers reading newspapers until a small flower grows on the dividing line between their property. What starts as a squabble over the flower soon escalates into an aggressive conflict. The film becomes a simple but powerful allegory for the cause, effects, and futility of war. The inspiration for Neighbors came from a trip that McLaren took to China with UNESCO. There he witnessed the beginnings of Maoism, which he said reinvigorated his faith in human nature. He was disturbed to see the way that China was being portrayed as the enemy in Canada during the Cold War. Having seen the other side, he set out to make a film that advocated for greater understanding and peaceful resolution of disputes. <coughs> McLaren said he made the film to show the covetousness of man and the irrationality of violence. He also wanted to explore the technique of pixelation, which is stop-motion animation using live actors. Not to be confused with pixelization. He shot the film in the summer of 1951 in Ottawa, Canada. The only other crew member was his cinematographer, Wolf Koenig. McLaren cast fellow artists and animators Jean-Paul Ladasseur and Grant Monroe as his actors. The film was shot on 16mm Kodachrome film and McLaren created the soundtrack by scratching directly onto the film stock. The result feels both simple and innocent using bright colors and cartoon-like sound effects. But the film also has a dimension of playfulness and surrealism as we see the actors moving in unnatural ways, an illusion created by the use of stop-motion animation. In the beginning, the response to the film was inauspicious. Neither film distributors nor the National Film Board of Canada were very impressed. Some of the complaints about the film included that it was too gruesome and of poor technical quality. Ultimately, they were able to arrange some theatrical bookings. As a result of screening for a few weeks in New York, the film was eligible for Academy Award consideration. It went on to be nominated and eventually to win the Oscar for Best Short Documentary. McLaren, who was in India at the time of the win, sent a telegram saying, I'm very happy, but who is this Oscar? From its humble beginnings, the film went on to great success. 
After the Oscar, everybody was clamoring to book it. Along the way, it encountered a few problems. At one point, a distributor found the scene where the men attack each other's wives and babies to be too extreme and actually cut it from the film. For a while, the shorter version became the prevalent version until the escalation of the war in Vietnam in the 60s when McLaren insisted that the film be restored to its original length and full impact. Norman McLaren himself said that if all of his films but one were to be destroyed, he would save neighbors because of the power of its message. As if to underline this universal quality, the film ends with Love Your Neighbor written out in many different languages. Amate il prossimo.